Hello and welcome to episode one of The Pilgrimage with Brazil. I'm Jamie. Coming up on today's episode, I've got two games for you. Our first two games in charge of the Brazilian national team were away to Bolivia in a World Cup qualifier and then four days later at home to Ecuador. So uh, before uh, we show you the first match, I will uh, introduce you to the uh, squad. So we'll have a look at that in just a moment. Okay, so let's meet the uh, squad then. And first up, it's Luis Junior, who is a 35 year old goalkeeper. And let's have a look at him in a bit more detail. And as you can see, he plays in the Brazilian league and plays for Bragantino. And he's got some decent attributes despite his uh, two star rating. And he's got 33 caps for the national team. So he's going to be uh, probably second choice goalkeeper, I would think. Uh, we'll move on. Jose Ricardo. I think at the moment he is likely to be third choice but uh, he will eventually become second choice goalkeeper and he plays for uh, Palmeiras in the Brazilian league and he's not brilliant but he's certainly got uh, a little bit about him. Uh, he does concede a lot of goals it has to be said. so. Probably, uh, and he's uncapped at the moment at full level, but does have under 20 caps to his name. So that's Jose Ricardo. Um, the third goalkeeper in the squad, and arguably the, uh, the most promising of the lot, is Kevin Leonardo, who plays for Bayern Munich. And he is 22 years of age, as yet uncapped at international level, but has five under 20 caps. And I'll be looking to uh, to put him in to the uh, team as soon as possible. And then we move on to the right backs. Rodriguez is uh, two and a half star current ability, three star potential, uh, Flamengo. And let's uh, just have a closer look at him. And as you can see, he's okay. He's got some reasonable attributes and he's got some very good ones. Pace, balance, agility, acceleration. So he's um, definitely got something about him. So that's Rodriguez. Uh, Roberto is two and a half star current ability, four star potential, 22 years of age, plays for Manchester United. And let's take a closer look at him. And as you can see, he's reasonable across the board with one or two standout uh, attributes. Uh, I pick one or two of them out for you. Um, he's got very good concentration. Decisions are excellent. His balance is great. Pace is decent and he's not bad at positioning either. So work rate leaves a little bit to be desired. So, uh, but he's definitely, uh, he's definitely okay. And he's only 22 as well, so he will get better. So that's Roberto. Uh, we then move into the center backs. Eugenio Carlos is a 29 year old, plays for Inter, and he's one of the best players in the squad. So uh, again, he's pretty solid across the board in terms of attributes. There's not much uh, in the way of defensive attributes that he can't do. So pretty, pretty happy to have him in my squad. 29 years of age, 42 caps for the uh, Brazil national team. Uh, next up is João Victor who you will recognize as being one of the uh, players who was pivotal to our uh, success with Liverpool. And he's a center back, uh, three star current ability and potential, 23 years of age. And again, he's got some very good attributes. He's excellent uh, heading and positioning. Um, he's also very decent at jumping, so he's going to be a big aerial threat, 
going forward and is definitely going to be able to help out at the back in the air so that's Yao Victor uh, next up Oswaldo who is from Palmeiras so another one of the uh, players based in Brazil two star current ability four star potential so I'm hoping he'll make a move to a bigger uh, league at some point fairly soon he's only 18 as well so two star ability four star potential and he's got some decent attributes already headings not bad tackling leaves a little bit to be desired uh, bravery is getting there his decision making is excellent as is his determination uh, he's got excellent jumping reach and natural fitness is great too as well as his balance so he's going to be a decent uh, defender in a couple of years time no doubt about that so that's Oswaldo uh, next up is Wenderson who's a left back plays for Manchester United three star current ability three star potential 29 years of age so we'll have a look at some of his attributes pick out some of the standout ones for you so concentration of 17 decisions at 16 both excellent is uh, agility of 18 and natural fitness of 16 so he's certainly going to be uh, one that we can rely on it's going to be a solid left back so that's Wenderson uh, next up Miranda who is a uh, three and a half star current ability four star potential left back plays for Tottenham Hotspur and let's take a look at some of his attributes and the standout ones for him technique of 16 is excellent uh, anticipation of 17 absolutely brilliant he's got uh, decent concentration of 16 decisions of 18 is excellent determination 16 again very good positioning 17 teamwork of 16 agility of 16 and balance of 19 so he's not going to be easy to knock off the ball he's going to be uh, very much uh, a first choice uh, left back for the immediate future anyway so that's Miranda next up is Carlos Antonio 26 year old uh, defensive midfielder from Manchester City so let's take a look at him and I'll just uh, highlight his uh, abilities for you and he's got let's have a look at his uh, standout attributes tackling of 17 uh, anticipation of 17 uh, positioning of 16 work rate of 16 he's got um, balance of 17 jumping reach of 16 but he's pretty impressive across the board so he's one of the best players we've got so far and uh, he uh, looks a very solid dependable player 28 caps so far and two goals at the age of 26 so that's Carlos Antonio. Zhao Guillerme is another defensive midfielder. Two and a half star current ability, four star potential. And let's pick out some of his uh, best attributes. Tackling of 18. And he's got uh, aggression of 17. Uh, bravery of 17. Uh, determination of 17. So we're gonna to have to watch out for the number of yellow cards he picks up. Make sure he's not on a tackle harder instruction. Uh, he's also got natural fitness of 16 and strength of 16 as well. So again, very, very solid uh, player, 21 years of age. He's got one cap and he's gonna get a lot more than that. So that's Zhao Guillaume. Uh, next player up is Jefferson Felipe, who is in the squad as a wing back, but uh, he is going to be primarily a centre back. He can certainly play there. And uh, his standout attributes in that position concentration of 16, positioning of 16, jumping reach of 17, pace of 16, stamina of 16 got uh, acceleration of 17 balance of 18 
and uh, yeah again he looks uh, pretty good he could do with being a bit better at heading but uh, he isn't bad at all and will be a key part of the squad so that's Jefferson Felipe on to the midfielders we've got Marcos Antonio who is four star current ability four star potential central midfielder and uh, he has got plenty of uh, good attributes his first touch of 17 passing of 16 technique of 16 anticipation 17 composure of 16 decisions of 16 off the ball at 17 vision of 18 and work rate of 16 agility 17 and a natural fitness of 16 he's going to be a key component of our uh, midfield even though he's 36 he's not a long-term option but he's going to be around for this qualifying campaign and the world cup so that's marcos antonio uh mateus tadeu again another liverpool player in the uh, squad the second liverpool player and he's a four and a half star ability and potential player 30 years of age 73 caps for the brazil squad and uh, his standout attributes first touch of 17 uh, passing of 18 uh, technique of 18 anticipation of 17 composure of 18 decisions of 16 off the ball of 17 vision of 20 acceleration of 16 agility of 16 balance of 16 natural fitness of 18 and strength of 16 he is uh, very very good indeed and delighted to have him in my squad so today is fantastic uh, on to valdemar a uh, newcastle player four star ability and potential 30 years of age so another player with plenty of experience 40 caps for the uh, brazil squad and his standout attributes let's have a look for him and we'll put the uh, standard central midfielder um one on and uh, his standard attributes or standout attributes i should say passing of 19 technique of 17 off the ball of 16 vision of 19 agility of 20 balance of 16 so again he's going to be a key component in the midfield 30 years of age so he's not going to be uh, around for years and years but he's certainly got plenty to offer at the moment so that's Valdemar uh, on now to Zhao Andre who is an Everton player so uh, the other uh, Merseyside club and he is a four star current ability and potential 29 year old with 39 caps for the uh, national team and his uh, standout attributes let's have a look passing of 16 technique of 17 anticipation 17 his decisions are 17 his teamwork of 17 vision of 18 He's got acceleration of 16, agility of 20, balance of 18, pace of 16 and stamina 17. So he's going to be able to run all day and uh, is going to be a very important player for the next few years anyway. So that's uh, Zhao Andre in central midfield. And we move on to the next player, which is Mike Stafferson who is a left-sided midfielder so we'll have a look at him he can play on the left of midfield but also as a left winger as well uh, which is probably where we're going to be using him and uh, his standout attributes there are dribbling of 16 uh, technique of 17 so he's absolutely a technician his determination of 16 and flair of 16 he's got acceleration of 17 agility of 17 natural fitness of 19 
pace of 17. So he is absolutely a flying machine on the left hand side and he's only 20 as well. So he is absolutely one for the future. Three star current ability, four star potential. So keep an eye on Mike Stefferson. And we'll move on to the next player, which is Leandro from Inter, who's a right winger. Uh, 28 years of age, four star current ability and potential. So we will go and have a look at him. He can also play up front as well. So that versatility could be invaluable. Um, in terms of his right wing position, um, he's got dribbling of 16. He's got first touch of 17. He's got uh, technique of 16. So another uh, strong technician in the squad. Flair of 16. Uh, leadership of 17, which is excellent. Off the ball 17. Uh, his acceleration of 16, agility of 20, balance of 17 and pace of 17. And he's also reasonably tall at six foot one as well. So his versatility, I'll have a look at him as a striker as well. As you can see, not quite as good as he is at right wing, despite him having a brighter green up front. So definitely going to be on the right wing for us. And... Um, no real um, other standout attributes to uh, to point out. Uh, his finishing's okay at 14. It's not terrible by any uh, any stretch. So let's move on from Leandro to Patrick, our other right winger, and uh, he is also able to play up front. Uh, he plays for Paris Saint Germain, and on the right wing. Uh, his standout attributes, dribbling of 16, uh, passing of 16, uh, flair of 16, I've missed one, composure of 16, uh, he's got off the ball of 16, uh, he's got 17 for agility, uh, balance of 17 as well, uh, pace of 17, so he's uh, pretty solid. Um, and uh, going to be a good uh, good player to have in the squad. Uh, he's only got four caps for the national team. I don't really understand why. He should have more than that, and he'll get he'll get plenty under me. So we'll move on from Patrick to uh, Teo, who is our other left-sided attacking player. And let's have a look at him then. He's a three and a half star current ability and potential at 29 years of age. He isn't going to get any better, but um, he is certainly up to the job. So we'll have a look at him as an inside forward, seeing as that's what we're using. Dribbling of 17 is excellent. Uh, as is passing of 17 and technique of 17. So yet another technician on the wing. Uh, he's got uh, 16 determination. Uh, he's got 16 vision and work rate of 16 as well. Acceleration of 16, agility of 17, balance of 18, which is excellent. And uh, it, the only thing he's lacking really is a little bit of pace, but not much. And a little bit on strength. But other than that, very, very well-rounded threat. He's only got 13 caps. Again, he should be looking to get a lot more. So uh, I'll be looking to involve him. So that's Teo. Um, finally, we move on to the strikers. João Pedro is uh, a Juventus player, 34 years of age. So again, coming to the twilight of his career, 85 caps and 29 goals for Brazil. So we'll be looking to in, to give him a few more and hopefully get him uh, a few more goals as well. His finishing of 15 isn't brilliant, but it's not awful. First touch of 17 is fantastic. Technique 16 isn't bad. Uh, anticipation of 16. Composure of 17. Flair of 16 is great and he's also got agility of 17 and balance of 16 so he's certainly going to be difficult to knock off the ball 
and uh, could be a bit of a target man up there for when uh, when we're trying to hold on to a, a game at the uh, at the end. But uh, in terms of goals, he's uh, he's certainly done it at club level. 129 in 272 for Juventus. So he's certainly got. Uh, he knows where the back of the net is. So that's Joe Pedro. And the final member of the squad is Jose Ricardo, who is uh, a Sheffield United player. Yes, you heard that correct. They've got a Brazilian, three and a half star current ability and potential. He's only 23. So let's have a look at him as a striker. And he's got uh, 17 for dribbling. He's got 18 first touch, 18 passing, 16 technique, 18 anticipation, 16 for decisions, 16 for flair, 16 off the ball, and 18 for vision. He's also got 16 agility, 17 for balance, 16 natural fitness. He is lacking in height. He's only five foot ten, so clearly he is not going to be a hold-up player. He's going to be uh, someone we're going to be looking to uh, play the ball in front of and uh, make use of uh, his uh, ability to uh, to get in behind. So at 23 years of age, he's got eight caps and just the one goal. We need to up both of those for him. So uh, that concludes the look at the squad. I'll be back with the first match of today's episode in just a moment. Okay, time now for the first match of today's episode, the World Cup qualifier away to Bolivia. And the team for this one is Kevin Leonardo in goal, back four of Miranda, Joe Victor, Eugenio Carlos and Roberto. It's Carlos Antonio at the base of midfield, Mateus Tadeu and Marcos Antonio in central midfield, Teo on the left wing, Leandro on the right, João Pedro up front. Let's submit the team and go and give the team talk. Okay, well the assistant manager uh, reckons that we owe Bolivia after what happened in the last match and we should go out and get revenge. Um, I'm not really looking for revenge. I'm looking for us to play as well as we can and to get the result because we should be getting a result. So let's pump the fists. We're favorites for a reason. And let's go into the tunnel. Um, and absolutely, it's a special day. I, I wanna get started. Um, I know what we're capable of and I believe we'll do well. Uh, Marcos Antonio is playing in a different position today. He's got the flexibility and versatility to do it. So let's get into the match and see how we get on. So Bolivia going with three at the back and three in front of them. So a back six effectively and then two in midfield and two up front. So they're looking to frustrate the hell out of us today. So let's demand more and just go for this and uh, still no highlights after 20 minutes Marcos Antonio Leandro with the attempt at goal but uh, he's offside and the chance goes begging so we need to try something else let's uh, demand more and let's turn on work ball in the box if we haven't already and it is worked into the box and uh, Carlos Antonio has given us the lead it's Bolivia nil Brazil one on the half hour mark so let's just uh, check that we've got work ball into box turned on um, where is it I'm obviously not looking in the right place. It is turned on, so it's fine. So we'll cancel that and go back to the match. Okay, let's demand more again. I want us to get a second goal and really put 
some daylight between us and the Bolivians. But it's uh, Ribera with the uh, goal kick. We've won it back, Teo, Jao Victor to Tadeu, back to Jao Victor, who plays it out to the left and Miranda, Teo to Jao Victor into Tadeu, Antonio to Leandro on the right hand side. He's in the area, cuts inside, and he's lost the ball. And we're on the attack again though, Roberto down the right this time and plays it back to Marcos and Marcos to Carlos Antonio just over the uh, crossbar into the last couple of minutes of the first half and we've had much the better of it but we only have the one goal to show for it at half time so I think we need to give the lads some encouragement going well capable of even better absolutely true so let's make two changes at half time Eugenio Carlos and we'll bring on um, Jefferson Felipe and also what else will we do um, fitness wise I think we will go with Teo coming off and Mike Stefferson coming on. So let's uh, get out there and try and get another goal in the second half. João Pedro isn't having a great game, so he's going to be the next player hooked off. In fact, I'm going to do that now. Um, in fact, I won't. I'll wait for this corner to play out as uh, we almost managed to get a goal. Right, let's do that sub now and bring on um, Jose Ricardo up front. Jefferson Felipe keeps it in play on the right hand side. Carlos Antonio gives it in back. Felipe into Marcos Antonio, Roberto takes over, plays it forward to Leandro, uh, he's fouled and Añez is in a big trouble here and it is his second yellow card meaning a red card and Bolivia will play the last half hour or so with 10 men. And I'm going to take Leandro off. In fact, I can't. We've already made three subs. I thought we'd get five. We don't. Marcos Antonio. And it's pinging around in the area. And Jefferson Felipe applies the finish to give us another, uh, another goal and a bit of a cushion, finally. It's Bolivia nil, Brazil 2. 63 minutes gone. And with them being down to 10 men, that should be enough to see us over the line. We do have a number of very, very tired players though. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Ribera with the uh, clearance for uh, Bolivia. Jefferson Felipe picks it up. Finds uh, Ant Marcos Antonio. Carlos Antonio, Marcos Antonio. Leandro out to the right and Roberto. And he gets to the byline, pulls it back from Marcos Antonio. It's cleared as far as Jefferson Felipe, who comes forward and plays it in, has a shot in the end. And it was only just off target into the last 20 minutes, still holding that uh, two goal lead and looking comfortable at this stage into the last just over 10 minutes now and as I say still two up so let's demand more one more time see if we can get a third goal just to round off the performance Leandro's really struggling at this point just have to hope he can see out the uh, remaining five minutes everybody else will definitely make it through and he's within touching distance of doing it himself now as well. Tadeu to Victor, back to Felipe. Tadeu 
to Carlos Antonio, has the shot just wide and into stoppage time. There's four minutes of it. And there's now Tadeu and Leandro both struggling to make it through. But we have made it to full time. Bolivia nil, Brazil to the full time score. And I'll be back in a moment with the second match of today's episode. Okay, time now for the second match of today's episode, and it's the World Cup qualifier at home to Ecuador. The team for this one, Kevin Leonardo in goal, back for Roberto, Eugenio Carlos, João Victor and Jefferson Felipe, Waldemar at the base of midfield, Marcos Antonio and Mateus Tadeu in central midfield, Patrick on the right wing, Teo on the left wing, João Pedro up front. So let's submit the team. And go and give the team talk. Okay, the assistant manager is recommending. I want you to pick up where you left off last time out. We played pretty well, so why not? So let's um, pump the fists. Uh, in fact, we can't do that. Let's outstretch the arms and agree with him. And let's go into the tunnel and complete our tunnel interview. How good did you have to be about complacency considering the differing form of these two teams? Um, Ecuador are a better team than their recent run of form might indicate. Um, it's all about momentum, keeping this going. Mood in the dressing room, um, they're confident with self-belief. So let's get into the match and see if we can uh, get another win on the board. Ecuador playing a 4-4-2 formation. We're going with our usual 4-3-3. And it is a Brazil corner. And we're 1-0 up already. Eugenio Carlos gives us a 1-0 lead after five minutes with a bullet header. And uh, that's a great start. See if we can uh, keep it going. Um, I do need to uh, change the uh, corners, but I'll do that after this match in time for the next episode. Okay, and Araujo picks it up for Ecuador, plays it back to his keeper, does it again, and keeper launches it long, but we've won it back. Felipe to Teo into Pedro uh, to Patrick, who's round the keeper, and Patrick makes it 2-0 with only 12 minutes gone. That is a brilliant goal. Delighted with that. And it's a great start. And we're playing well. Roberto with the throw in into Patrick finds Marcos Antonio. Pedro back to Marcos Antonio into Mateus Tadeu. Valdemar to Joe Victor into Mateus Tadeu. Teo turns his man, plays it in for Patrick, who has the shot, but Cano is equal to it in the Ecuador goal. And as it stands, we are doing very nicely. Uh, Macias to Pico, to Macias. Pico again to Farigra. And he's lost out to Tadeu with a crunching challenge. Tadeu who's hit the crossbar. Incapi plays it clear to Macias. And the highlight comes to an end. I'll bring the league table up. As you can see, we are currently, as it stands, three points clear at the top ahead of Argentina. A further two clear of Uruguay. And a further point clear of Colombia and Chile. I don't think we'll be caught by the rest. And it's Cano with the goal kick for Ecuador. It's a long one, but Joe Victor's under it. Tadeu to Pedro, plays it through. And Teo picks it up, crosses. Patrick with the header, but it's over the top. And the chance goes begging. In terms of changes, fitness-wise, we are reasonably okay. I think probably Roberto, possibly Tadeu, but 
We'll have a look at half time just to make sure. Uh, Teo wins it back, finds Jay Pedro, finds Patrick, gives it back to Pedro, who dinks it over the keeper. And it is Brazil 3, Ecuador 0. 36 minutes gone. And this game's over as far as I'm concerned. We now just need to uh, protect the players from injury and uh, prevent anything uh, unnecessary happening. Obviously, we need to protect anybody from uh, yellow and red cards. Uh, it's a corner. Marcos Antonio, the header from Eugenio Carlos. He's done it again. And it's 4-0. Brazil 4, Ecuador 0. And that is another bullet header. Two for him. Four for Brazil. And centre-backs are not supposed to score two goals in a game in international football. He has, and that's brilliant. Um, yeah, what a 45 minutes that was. You've blown them away. Let's have a look and see how the lads are looking now. And I think one change. Roberto off. And we'll bring on Rodriguez. Probably, although, actually, yeah, Rodriguez it is. So we'll bring Rodriguez on. He's fine. Start the second half. Just the one change, as I say. The next change, I'm not sure of yet. Probably today, but we'll see. Probably on around about the hour mark, maybe 65 if we're really lucky. So let's encourage the lads. And uh, just keep an eye on things. Make sure no one's in danger of, uh, of a red card or anything like that. Uh, mentality wise, we need to put some smiles on faces. They're all red at the moment. So that needs to be the next uh, thing. I think possibly drop some praise seeing as we're 4-0 up. So as soon as I get the chance, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'll do that now. Uh, praise the lads. They are now all green. Right, today who does need to come off. So we'll bring on... Um, Jose Ricardo and the next player to come off is going to be Teo on the left hand side and he'll be the last substitute so Mike Stefferson is going to come on for another uh, cameo appearance in the last 15 minutes and that goes along with the assistant manager's recommendation as well uh, there's a few other players who are getting decidedly tired. We've absolutely bossed this game. 35 attempts at goal, 19 on target, compared to Ecuador 6 and 1 on target. And we're going to run out comfortable winners, holding a 4-0 lead going into stoppage time. And looking to just see that out. And we're seconds away from doing so. And there it is confirmed. Brazil 4, Ecuador 0. I'll be back in a moment to show you the league table and to confirm what's coming up on the next episode. OK, time now to take a look at the World Cup qualification table. And as you can see, with eight games gone, we've won six, drawn one, lost one. Uh, scored 21, conceded 6, we've got 19 points, we're 3 clear at the top of the table, so let's take a look at what's coming up on the next episode, and quite obviously we're going to be back straight away for the uh, away qualifiers against Paraguay and Colombia in October. So uh, I will uh, end the episode there. If you've enjoyed that, please leave a nice thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for Monday to Friday Football Manager videos. Thank you very much indeed for watching and goodbye.